You know, life's full of obstacles and full of uh, disappointments. It's full of confusion. It's full of controversy, as we can see in the news media every day. Um, and at times we feel like we ha don't have courage. You know, we don't have the courage to stand. And I use the word feel in that we don't feel like we have courage. You know, courage is not a feeling. Courage is an action. You don't have courage one day and lose it the next. You either act on and you be courageous or you don't. And, you know, when I think about the fact that um, we're called by holy calling, if you're a child of God, to proclaim the truth, to proclaim the gospel, not to bend, not to cower down, not to be afraid to tell it like it is. You've got to have the courage to tell it like it is. And when I pray and ask God to give me more boldness and give God give me more of an anointing to stand firm and be what you call me to be, he took me to Joshua 1, 9, and he forever settles it because he says, Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. In other words, I've said it. Go and do it. If God says it, you can bet on it, you can believe it, and it's settled, forever settled in heaven. And, you know, I think one of the major problems in our country today, with all the stuff going on with Bruce Jenner and all this other stuff these guys are, uh, the media and preachers are talking about, my biggest problem is is not with Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner's a lost man. There's plenty of lost people in the world today. We need to be praying for all the lost people to be saved. The Bible says we've all come, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, so we must be born again. Bruce Jenner needs to be saved. That's the number one problem he's got today, and that's the number one problem in our country today, is there's too many lost people, especially a lot of lost people proclaiming to be Christians, yet not standing on the truth, not preaching the truth. Would rather tell somebody, look, it's all about love. God loves you, and it's, God's going to overlook your sin and all this other stuff. Look, God don't overlook sin. God takes sin so seriously that he sent his son to die for us. He said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent Jesus Christ to that cross to shed his blood because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remissions of sins. Then he died, rose again the third day, overcome death, hell, and the grave for you and I. So God takes sin very seriously. And on judgment day, sin will be judged. You know, God loves everybody. God's not um, uh, picking and choosing who he loves. He, he has no respecter of persons. But one thing we need to get across today, unless you repent of your sins and believe on Jesus Christ to finish work at the cross, what I just explained to you, what he'd done on the cross and how he rose again the third day, you won't be saved. You can't be saved. You know, in the Bible, when I look and see where the preachers, um, uh, Peter, for instance, when he preached that first sermon, after the day of Pentecost, he told them, you guys are the ones that crucified Christ. You're the ones that put him on the cross. You're the ones that killed the Son of God. But God rose him, rose him up again the third day, and they were pricked in their heart, and they repented. You know, I heard Jesus loved me all my life, but until I realized I was lost and the burden of my sin overweighed me, and I realized that I'm going to hell. If I don't get saved, I'm going to die and go to hell. Once I repented of my sins, the love and the power of God come upon me, and that grace that he has is greater than my sin, and that love forever changed me. That's the gospel. That's what we need to be preaching. Repent of your sins and be born again. And you know, a lot of people out there don't have the courage to preach the truth because they're worried about numbers, they're worried about their church, they're worried about their reputation, they're worried about people being offended. I could care less about all of that. All I care about is how God, is, is God pleased with me and can I help you and tell you the truth today. I want you to have courage. I want to give you a shot of courage today. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hallelujah. When you start feeling down, you start feeling worried, you start feeling like you don't have the courage, forget the word feel, throw that out of the way, and go back to Joshua 1, 9, where he says, Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. If this has encouraged you today, if it's given you a shot of courage, why don't you share this? Somebody on your news feed, I'm sure, needs some courage today. Stand bold. Help me evangelize our country. Share this video. And until next time, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen.